Hello and welcome to A Shot of Wildlife. In this video, I'm going to set the record straight about 10 wildlife myths that you might still believe in. I'm going to start with a wildlife myth that I hadn't actually heard of until doing some research for this video. And that is that some people believe that hedgehogs carry apples around on their backs. The first record of this myth was in a book titled Natural History and written by Pliny the Elder of the Roman Empire in 77 AD. In the book it explains how hedgehogs roll on top of windfall apples to gather them up in their spines to carry away and eat them later. Despite there being several clearly staged photos online, it is not true hedgehogs do not gather apples, or anything else for that matter, in their spines as a way of carrying them. A hedgehog's diet mainly consists of invertebrates, carrion and other high protein foods, so although they do sometimes eat apples, they get very little nutrition from them. Next up is another nocturnal mammal myth, and it goes like this. If young girls venture out after dark, bats will deliberately swoop down and get tangled in their hair. The origins of this story aren't clear, but it seems to have been told across America and Europe, probably as a way of trying to keep girls indoors at night time. Now although I am calling this a myth, I suspect there probably has been at least one occasion at some point in the past where a bat has got tangled in a person's hair, but this is definitely not a common thing and although I can't speak for the potential bats in question, I'm fairly certain it was not on purpose. Bats have good eyesight, even in the dark, and can also use echolocation to navigate, so if one has got tangled in someone's hair, it would have been an accident. Even bats have bad days. The next myth is probably the most newly formed on this list, that ducks quacks don't echo. This was first written about in the 1990s, although it may have started before then, and is as simple as the sentence. Some people believed that something in the sound of a duck's quack made it unique and so that it didn't echo. Unfortunately for believers, in 2003 an acoustic scientist put this to the test and found that just like every other known sound, duck's quacks do indeed echo. Only female ducks actually quack and it's thought this myth may have started because the noise is quite quiet and ducks aren't usually found in places that produce strong echoes. If you don't like spiders, skip forward to the time that is on the screen now. I'm sure you've probably heard a variation of this myth at some point in your life, that you unwittingly swallow spiders in your sleep. The numbers vary from 8 spiders swallowed per year to a mere 20 over the course of a lifetime. But the truth is, there is no evidence that a person swallows even a single spider in their life. Given that spiders are usually scared of people, they aren't likely to willingly walk into a warm, wet mouth, and even if they would, how often do you sleep with your mouth open, and how often do you swallow in the night? Spiders see a lot of the world through vibrations, and just the movement of a person breathing is likely to keep even the bravest eight-legged explorer well away. Welcome back arachnophobes, don't worry, no more spiders. The next myth is going to be a short one to explain and I'm not sure how many people actually believe this to be true. However, apparently some people do believe that small birds are just younger versions of larger birds. The specific example I've been given is from a teacher who said that several of her students believed the pied wagtail was a baby magpie. Now I'm not here to shame anyone, Everyone has to start somewhere, and to be honest, I'm just glad that the young people were looking at a bird and wanting to know a bit more about it. In reality, a lot of young birds leave the nest at almost the same size as their parents, and in some species, especially birds of prey, the young females are often larger than their fathers even before leaving the nest. Next up is probably the most commonly quoted wildlife myth, that you are never more than 6 feet or two meters from a rat. Now there probably are places in the world where you are always in close proximity to rats, but the maths on this, in the UK at least, does not work. I know it's more complicated than a simple equation, 
neither rats or people are evenly spread across the country. But even so, there are roughly 10.5 million brown rats in the UK and about 67 million people. If you were never more than six feet from a rat, you would never be more than one foot from another person. Someone smarter than me has done the calculations and if rats were evenly distributed, it works out that you would never actually be more than 164 feet from one whilst in an urban area, and often far further than this whilst in the countryside. This myth started around 100 years ago and it's thought that it was shared by authorities to encourage people to keep their homes and gardens tidier. Speaking of gardens, the next myth is one of the most random on this list and focuses on a common garden resident. Some people believe that the number of spots on a ladybird's back tells you how many years old it is. I think I remember as a kid counting the spots on a ladybird and believing this to be true, but of course it is not. There are 26 different species of ladybird in the UK and the number of spots and the pattern that they are in simply helps to show which species they are. The aptly named 24 spot ladybird has 24 spots, but just like most other species, they'd be lucky to survive for longer than 12 months. Some people might argue that the next myth doesn't belong on this list and is actually true, although there is no evidence to support it. The saying goes that an angry swan can break a human's arm with a single blow from its wing. Swans do have very powerful wings. In a previous life when I used to do wildlife rescue, I was hit by several and it definitely does hurt. But there has never been a recorded instance of one breaking a human's arm or any other bone. The only example I can find where an interaction between a swan and a person has ended up with a broken bone was of a man in Ireland who broke his leg whilst running away from an angry swan. Now I won't lie, this next wildlife myth does have a bit of truth to it, but it's nowhere near as bad as some people think. The saying goes that whilst you are sleeping, earwigs can try to crawl into your ears, eat through the ear canal and then begin to eat your brain from the inside. The truth in this myth is that there have been rare examples of these small insects climbing into people's ears, but they do not do so to eat your brains and are simply trying to find a dark place to hide. The next wildlife myth is believed in many places around the world, that if you touch toads, you will either get, or in some places cure, warts. It isn't a good idea to touch toads, but in reality, they are more at risk from you than you are of them. The two species that we get in the UK can produce a noxious substance from glands behind their eyes when they feel threatened, but if you don't lick them, this is unlikely to cause you any harm. However, touching toads with your bare hands may cause harm to them. A lot of the substances, soaps and even sweat that you have on your hands can be absorbed by the toad's permeable skin and potentially make them unwell. I always like to go above and beyond with these list videos, so a load of keen-eared among you would have noticed that I've already covered 10 wildlife myths. Here is a bonus one. No, geese, not even barnacle geese, do not start their lives as actual barnacles. So, were you surprised to find out that some of those things were not true? Or do you disagree and think some of those myths are actually facts? Let me know in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, you'll probably also like this British wildlife video here. And if you do like that, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.